the image is actually a pair of muscles and you might be thinking hang on james there's three images how can it be a pair well these two are the same muscle this one which i'm going to come to second actually well let me put it in now these are the deltoids okay so this is the deltoid muscle you see we're looking at it from the back and the front but before we really get into that i want to introduce you to this sort of wing shaped muscle on the back this has got a crazy name really not really if you understand why it's called this but it's called the latissimus dorsi okay Okay, so this is our latissimus dorsi muscle. So here we are, as I said, it's kind of wing shaped, it features on the back, it goes down towards the base of the spine, comes around, you see I've almost drawn a pair of wings there. Now, we've obviously got our little man here who's sitting in the anatomical standing position, but the point I'd like to make is, let's say that this person's arm was up in this kind of position, and it was up in this kind of position. Okay, I've not drawn that very well. What this muscle would do was it would contract and pull in this direction here. And what that would do there is it would adduct bring back to the center the arms so this muscle the dismus dorsi when it contracts it adducts the muscle now interestingly the deltoid as its pair and obviously we're seeing it twice here what we find with this muscle is when it contracts it pulls inwards like this it pulls inwards it pulls inwards inwards so of course what happens when it does that it effectively raises the arm like this okay uh, ultimately up into this sort of position and of course that is called abduction taking the uh, ball and socket joint away from the midline of the body so the deltoid performs abduction the latissimus dorsi performs adduction i should have finished that off correctly not just to adduct it's adduction okay so we've got those pairs on the shoulder and the, and the back. Now, we're also gonna look at another shoulder muscle. So you could say, okay, well, this is the shoulder, right? We stripped away some muscle. In fact, we stripped away the deltoid. We have got a bunch of muscles here. These are more sort of, um, these are deeper muscles. And these are what we call the rotator cuff. And good things, uh, really good sort of weight training, for example, will work the rotator cuff, but the job of the rotator cuff is shoulder stabi stability. Now, I would encourage you to do some research on how you actually strengthen the rotator cuff. There are actually four muscles in there. I can tell you the names if you really want me to, infraspinatus, subscapularis, supraspinatus, and teres minor. You're not gonna get marks for saying that on your exam, there's four of them in here. Um, but that's their job collectively is shoulder stability. They do actually do one other job as well, but I'm not gonna get into that here. But maybe, you know, again, future study. Let's take things a little bit further here we have our pectorals okay we have our pectorals now this is a muscle group okay so we have our pectorals here now when these contract they tend and there are exceptions they tend to contract inwards okay so they contract inwards and there's a couple of jobs that they do they they can bring the arm across the body like this as if you're doing like a hook shot in boxing or something like that they're also important when you do things like a press up for example they assist in the upwards and the downwards phase of a press up okay but they're also breathing muscles and you might come across that in in sort of future studies now what do we have here we have the muscles of the arm we have a pair here we have the bicep here we have the tricep. So let's identify them as a pair, first of all. So here's our bicep. You'll notice actually two muscles here. So, and, and anyway, I'm not gonna get into the brachialis, but let's, let, let's just have a look. This muscle is structured here. It comes down and connects to the radius bone. And when it contracts, it contracts upwards. It contracts upwards. So this forearm will do this action. And of course, we call that elbow flexion. So the bicep predominantly performs elbow flexion now the tricep is a little bit different it inserts down here let me choose a different color it inserts down here onto the end of the ulna so when this contracts imagine that the arm was in this position it would contract and pull upwards like this okay and that would straighten the arm back in this direction and of course that is what we call extension okay so we get extension from the tricep okay so that's really nice to understand let's go a little bit further here we have our external obliques now you might be thinking well hang on james there are abdominals well the abdominals in fact you can see them here the the abdominal the abdominals sit beneath the external obliques and we don't really st study the abdominals now the external obliques do a lots of things funnily enough they're involved in breathing uh, they do a few other bits and bobs but the key thing to bear in mind is that they can kind of pull in this direction in other words, they can sort of get you to lean to the side. We actually call that lateral flexion of the spine, but we're not going to look at it here. They can cause you to lean from side to side or pull your body more upright. So 
That's the external obliques. These ones are some of my favorite muscles. I bet you lot don't even have favorite muscles, do you? Well, these are some of mine. These little, apparently little muscles here, these are called hip flexors. Now, I want to make sure that you guys are clear that flexion of the hip is when the leg is in front of the body. So imagine that leg has been brought in front of the body. These muscles here would contract upwards like this, and it would effectively pull the femur, which of course it's inserted onto, in front of the body. In other words, they flex the hip. Now the muscle group that they pair with are the gluteals. And here we have the gluteals, the old butt cheek muscles, the buttocks, I suppose you could say. When these muscles contract, they contract inwards like this, or inwards like this. And of course, what they do is they cause, sorry, I should have said here, this is flexion. I mean, it goes without saying for the hip flexors really, but the gluteals are responsible here for hip extension. Now let's just address that for a second, what we mean by hip extension. Hip extension is when these muscles pull in like this, okay, and it draws the leg behind the person in this way. So imagine you're drawing your leg back to kick a rugby ball, for example, that is extension of the hip. Almost there, we have two uh, groups of muscles on the, on the effectively on the thigh or the upper leg. This group over here, we refer to as the hamstring group, okay? And do notice it's a group. So I'm gonna call it the hamstrings. And if I, I angled it here, so you could see that there are one, two, three of them. Again, we could name them here, bicep femoris, semitendinosus, semimembranosus. But anyway, that's not important for today. What I want you guys to realize is that they insert here, and you'll see also on this side here. And when they contract upwards, when they contract upwards, effectively, it curls the knee upwards and we get flexion of the knee, that's what the hamstrings perform. Whereas our quadriceps, and again, you'll notice one, two, three, four, in this case, that I angled it so you could see both sides here, but four, we've got the quadricep group, okay, four muscles. If you really wanna know what they're called, go Google them, I'll quickly tell you, vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius, vastus medialis, uh, rectus femoris, doesn't matter for today, but if you're interested, you go and find out for yourself. And what these muscles do, they insert, actually you can't quite see it, they actually come across it and they insert onto this here called, it's, it's got a posh name, tibial tuber, it doesn't matter. But what they do is if the leg is in this position, you know, drawn back at the knee, it will cause this movement. And that of course is extension. Dropping in lots of additional technical terms for today. None of them need learning apart from the things I'm writing down guys, okay? Now, last ones. What have we got here? We have this muscle on what we often call the calf muscle. This is your gastroc, don't you dare forget that C in the middle of this spelling, gastrocnemius, okay? It's a gastrocnemius. It's actually another muscle in there as well, they work together. And what this muscle does, it inserts on the heel via this Achilles tendon down to the heel. So when it contracts upwards, upwards, it causes the toes to point down like this. And of course, you know, we can say pointing the toes, that's absolutely fine. But we, we really want to say that this is plantar flexion. And we do plantar flexion when we're pointing our toes in ballet, when we're about to do a, a jump because we're rebounding a ball in basketball, uh, when we're pushing off the blocks and sprint style athletics, all of those kind of movements. And its partner in crime, as it were, is this muscle on the front of the shin. This is called the tibialis relating to the tibia, of course, tibialis, anterior. Anterior means at the front. So at the front of the tibia, we have got this tibialis anterior. And when it contracts, it pulls upwards, it pulls upwards, and it causes the toes to curl back upwards. And of course, we call this dorsiflexion. Now, a little word of clarification here, and this doesn't, it's not super important, but plantar flexion is two words. Dorsiflexion is one word. It gets done wrong all the time, so don't worry if you mix that up. But we need to understand that dorsi flexion is bringing the toes towards the shin. Plantar flexion is the contraction of the gastrocnemius to pull the toes down in a pointed toes or takeoff type manner. Thank you.